Uh, Irving Welsh's uh, stance, it sounds, it sounds like he's speaking some, some common sense. This surely can't be seen as transphobic. No, I mean, to be honest, whilst um, it's obviously great that he's spoken up um, in, in support of J.K. Rowling, I do think it was a bit meany mouthed I mean, to say there must be some sort of way forward, Nick, you know, there must be some sort of compromise. Well, I'd like to know which women's rights he thinks it's OK to compromise. Uh, how many <laughs> children he thinks it's OK to put on puberty blockers, rendering potentially... You know, I think it's actually a little bit, um, it's a bit, it's almost slightly backhanded, really. I mean, yes, it's great that he's he supported her, um, but um, he also admitted to using trans sensitivity readers, which I thought was, um, well, surprising, to say the least. So he, he said he's using trans sensitivity readers for his own work? Yeah, and I mean, there's something that I thought was particularly ironic about that um, is that, you know, obviously that's predicated on the idea that um, you can't, as an author, entirely get into somebody else's mind, entirely into their, their mindset, which I think is a really dreadful admission for an author to make, because you would expect that to be part of the point of literature, is to get into other people's minds. And moreover, you know, thinking about the trans issue in particular, well, I don't ever remember being asked by, for example, Eddie Izzard if it was okay for him to wear my identity. Well, wear, wear my sensitivity readers, please. I mean, it's ridiculous. <laughs> and uh, Irvin Welsh said uh, that there's such a massive difference between the majority of trans people and how they're represented on social media. Do you think he's right? No. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, um, I think um, I think um, a lot of them are very angry. I think there's a lot of misdirected anger. Um, so, for example, today there was a demonstration in Birmingham of um, women's rights activists, and they were mobbed. They were surrounded. The police didn't step in to support them. They were harassed. They were intimidated by this apparently vulnerable minority. So I have no doubt there are some people who suffer with gender dysphoria. I also have absolutely no doubt there are a lot of men for whom it's a fetish, and apparently we're not allowed to talk about that. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 uh, the people making the, making the fuss and, and making the violent threats, uh, they don't seem to be um, the, the sort of genuine trans women who just want to pass in society and, and get on with their lives. They seem to be more like women like me, uh, who are just out there <laughs> looking for a ruck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally, absolutely. I think um, I think that's that's part of the um, the anger they feel. Is quite often because it is in some ways motivated by a fetish. Um, I think you know there's no um, surprise in a way that this movement has emerged at around the same time as free online pornography has become a huge industry. Um, so I think you know when you have a, a woman who says no, I don't believe you. I think that's actually taken as a very visceral, personal reaction, which I think accounts for a lot of the anger. And do you think there'll be a turning point soon where everyone settles down a bit and we can all hold hands and move forward <laughs> together? I mean, I think the, the point we need to aim for is to just to wrestle back reality. Um, I think there's, you know, I, I get a bit annoyed with people sort of looking for middle ways, looking for, to concede points, because frankly, until five minutes ago, we all knew that there were two sexes. It wasn't controversial. Nothing that J.K. Rowling has said is remotely controversial. You know, she was right when it came to the Tavistock, for example, which has now been closed. Um, she's been right when it comes to women-only spaces. You know, of course women need women-only space when they've been abused by men. These aren't controversial things to say, and I often feel like the, the burden of proof is reversed in a way with this one. Like, you know, it shouldn't be up for us to explain why women don't have penises. It really should be up to the other side to say, you know, <laughs> to make their arguments, and then we can decide whether we agree with them or not. But the idea of having them imposed, which they have been quite stealthily by lobby groups, is an on. And J.K. Rowling, I mean, she's famously never actually said something transphobic. If she had, then people could hold that up as evidence. But they, they, they say she, you know, she appears transphobic. She has the aura of trans, transphobia, they, but they, they, can't, they can't really pin it on her. Why, why do you think she's singled out for, for such hate? Well, I think because she's the only one that's, that's had a bit of courage, um, frankly. I mean, you know, there were uh, so few authors who are speaking out. And I think that's in part because the chair of the Society of Authors, Joanne Harris, um, is essentially a trans activist. I don't think that helps matters. Um, and, you know, I think there's a, a kind of an emerter of silence uh, across... Um, particularly in sort of el elitist industries, like, you know, like your authors, like your media, like I think there is a real kind of clique of right thinkers and wrong thinkers, and nobody wants to be on the wrong side of that. I see. Anyway, Joe Bartosz, uh, journalist and writer, thank you so much for joining us tonight.
Let's bring in my esteemed panel. Do either of you agree with Urban Welsh? No. Nope. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's that question answered. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I mean, that, exactly uh, as Joe just said, this idea that you have to wrestle back reality is, is yeah. pretty frustrating, mm. isn't it? That this idea that, you know, somebody behaves really, really badly and then they can kind of give 50% and it's like, oh, now we're in the middle. It's like, no, you started this. Like, yeah. why do can you, you not to... point at me, please, when you're saying oh, this? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, it's outrageous. Yeah, and um, Scotland's obviously the, the place for, for this kind of thing, uh, this debate to, to happen. Absolutely, um, with the stunning trans woman that is Isla Bryson and her massive clitoris. Yeah, and we, we invented the kilt, which was, uh, which was an early attempt at a yeah, trans woman. Exactly. Um, so, you know, it, it's all good news. I'm Do disappointed it, that he's bringing in sensitivity readers. Yeah. And I would expect, if you're Irvine Welsh, you've proved yourself. I mean, sure, I, like, I, I went well, to the, see... The, um, the whole point of Irvine Welsh is he's supposed to be the most right. visceral Shocking, right. you know, outrageous, taboo-busting author, but then he's yes. got sensitivity readers. And, and they shouldn't be the ones determining what the art is. I mean, I, I'm a bit of a broken record on this, but I want to hear from the artist, not the person policing the artist. But right. the problem is with publishing is like a lot of these, uh, li you know, these liberal, in inverted commas, industries, they're the ones who are going to be deciding whether the artist, whether the writer gets published. And it's very, very difficult now for authors to actually get their books published, particularly if they go against prevailing orthodoxies. Yeah. Like you even saw it with Jordan Peterson, where I think it was in Canada, there's these young kids who work in the publishing house, you know, it's staging demonstrations and all the rest of it. Yeah. And obviously Jordan got published because he's Jordan, but how many people who are coming through, really talented new young novelists. Self-censor. Yeah, because they just know that if they go against this prevailing orthodoxy, they are not going to get published. And let's be honest, essentially, they're not going to have a career. And we've seen a similar thing happen with the Stand Comedy Club, which is going to provide a platform to Joanna Cherry, who's uh, a gender-critical lesbian. Uh, and, the, and then the staff at the Stand um, cancelled the performance by saying they, they, they weren't willing to, to work. Now it is yeah. going ahead, because it, it turned out it breached the equalities uh, the Equalities Act to, to cancel it. Uh, but I mean, that's, that's a similar yeah, way. Yeah, it is of... similar. And that's why you need the Irvine Welsh, the Jordan Petersons. Um, I went to see Lionel Shriver talking about sensitivity readers recently. She's having none of it. <laughs> yeah. uh, good for her. And, and those people are kind of paving the way for the, the baby writers to come up, aren't they? Because yeah. if you're a new writer, you're far more likely to self censor in the first place or invite sensitivity readers in so that you can get your work published. It's like, no, we want to hear the real. Give me the art and I'll decide if I like it or not. Yeah. Don't tell me what I can and can't have. It, it drives me mad. Do you think we'll get more celebrities now that you know J.K. Rowling and then Irvin Welsh have sort of broken the seal on this? Do you think? Do you think we'll get more no. celebrities following their footsteps? Through no, the no. no. Do you remember when Guy Pearce said something like, a, a, "A person is a, an actor is a person who can play any role," or something like that, and an actor should be able to play any role? It lasted about two days before the wrath of Hollywood came down, and this is how you know he messed up. He then did two little screenshots of apology and pinned it to his Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. That's how you know that somebody, <laughs> is, 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 the agent has a had a little word. Screenshot apologies. Yeah. 